Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I just to uh, welcome everyone on Facebook, all the Set Free family and friends, and the Facebook community. Amen. Once again, it's Thursday night, Set Free Online Church. We're having church tonight. So uh, with no further ado, I'm going to go back to the archives and play this song. Uh, just uh, do a little rap song today. All right. Here we go. Oh, This is a day, once again, that the Lord has made. Thank you for tuning in to Radio Que Loco. <laughs> yeah, the, on your radio dial. Reminds me of, of the, of the um, remi reminds me of the radio broadcasts I had back in the days. So, anyway, here's another song. So, uh, just kick back and listen up. It's an OG song. Yeah. 
You know this is an old song. Thank him. Amen. That's uh that's the uh the Bible says that in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. I thank God today that I'm saved, I'm, I'm you know, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, God's got a plan in my life, you know, I've I've uh, answered the call. I mean, I thank God today for a lot of things in my life, for my wife, my children, 
uh, you know, my my church. Uh, there's there's so many things to be grateful for, thankful for. Man, I appreciate everything God has done for me. I appreciate it. It's a lot of stuff. Man, most of you don't know. You don't know it. We all don't know each other's life, you know, usually. Some people do, you know. But most of my old old friends, they're, they're, they're gone, man. They're gone. So there's a few, though. A few, though, still know. But we, we, we know... We know what God has done in our life. Amen. We know what God has done in our life. But before I uh, start this message about the cross again, part two, you know, I want to uh, want to thank everyone that's been uh, continuing to give, you know, um, to give to the ministry. Uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in tithing and giving and making offerings and all that. And so no matter, regardless of this Yorona virus, I mean, you know, that's so what? I mean, you just keep on giving to the Lord because I mean, we're going to get out of this mess. Amen. It's. Hey, I went to Lowe's yesterday, and uh, there was must have been like 300 people in there. There was no lines, and half the people had masks, the other half didn't, and nobody had gloves. <laughs> and the workers didn't have nothing either. So I was going like, okay, so Bakersfield is like, hey, yes, do that's it, man. There's no more. Uh, uh, there's no more. Um, uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, social distancing and all that. So anyway, so we're we're gonna get out of this mess. We're gonna get out of this mess. But I want to thank everyone for. For giving, uh, if you want to continue to give, if you if you don't know if you haven't heard it, uh, you can go to your bank and get on a uh, uh, Zal Quick Pay, Zal Quick Pay. Uh, you know, sign up and then uh, put in there set free, set free angel at att.net. That's the name. You put that name in there with the amount, and it goes directly to our church account. Amen. Set free angel at att.net. Or the other way is. You uh, mail it to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to the P.O. Box. The P.O. Box, the P.O. Box number is uh, P.O. Box 3324, uh, Bakersfield, California, 93385. And if you just want to get out of the house, you know, that quarantine's got to you. You got cabin fever. You can take it over there to uh, Eddie's house or, or Louie and Ida's house right there at 3221 Parkland Court right there. Just drop it off. It'll get to the church. Amen. So, uh Anyway, let me let me get to uh, what I was going to be preaching on today. The you know <clears throat> last week, last week I was uh, you know this has only been a couple of weeks since Easter, right? And I mentioned that last week that uh, you know Easter just passed and the cross and you know so, but I want to reiterate something today for everyone because we all really need to understand what's what's happening in our personal life, what's happening. So, you know, like I said, last week I mentioned that, that everyone has to come to the cross and ask for forgiveness for the things that he or she has done. Let me say that again. Everyone has to come to the cross and ask for forgiveness for the things that he or she has done. There is no other way to obtain eternal life in the future, along with the dramatic change that happens to us right now in the present. The dramatic change that happens to us right now in the present. I'm going to be talking about that today. The two go together. Eternal life and a changed life. Eternal life and a changed life. Eternal life and, a ch and the change of your nature. Amen? So there are, there are many teachings today. And, you know, just this is a sidebar. Uh, there are many teachings on the Internet as well as books being written about there are many paths to God philosophy. There are many paths to God. I've heard of so many of those, man. There are many paths to God philosophy. But uh, I too, let me let me share this. I too believe that there are many paths to God. Right? There's the addiction path. There's the alcoholic path. There's the criminal path. There's the new age path. There's the one with the universe astral projection path. There's the goody goody two shoes path. Or whatever path you may be on. But there is only one door that you can pass through. And that's Jesus Christ. One door. That that's Jesus Christ. That's biblical. Let me read. Let me read a scripture to you. It says in uh, in John chapter ten verse one. It says uh, Jesus talking. It says, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber." Verse seven. Jesus still talking. Then said Jesus to them, "Verily, verily, I say unto you." I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. You know why? Because there's another one that says, 
My sheep hear my voice. Verse 9 says, I am the door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I love that scripture. It's, uh, I, I am the door. Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. Excuse me. So, I am the door. So last week, <clears throat> last week I began to speak about that dramatic change that happens, you know. And so uh, I'm going to try to show you this real quick. Uh, there you go. Yeah, you can see that, right? Steak and cherry pie. That's the book I published. So in case you've never seen it, you can order it on Amazon Books, Google Books, Barnes and Noble Books. Uh, you know, uh, it's. Um, uh, for every book I sell, I get to send one into the prison for free. But anyway, I, I there's a see if we can get a close up. This guy, see that, see that good looking young guy right there. <laughs> he was mad though. That's 1974, 1974. Steak and cherry pie. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to finish a uh, book too, but I've been procrastinating. So um, I, I need the Lord to speak to me again. <laughs> so. Anyway, so there, last week I was talking about that, that dramatic change that happens. So, so I ha see, I had a total life-changing experience in the hole after that visit. You can, you can find that story in the book. I talked about it last week a little bit, but you can find it in the book. And so, um, you know, I had a life-changing experience in the hole after that visit. Them two ladies came to visit me, you know, the ones I told you about, told me that Jesus loves me, I rejected it, you know, all that. So... So when God, when God, though, when I was in there, when God revealed himself to me, I was struck down, knocked off my high horse, and humbled. I, I'm serious. I wept and cried from, uh, from deep within, within my heart. Painful tears. Painful, man. Painful tears. I knew who I was. God opened my eyes to see who he was. And I, you know, once he opens your eyes to see who he is, that he's real, man, all you're going to do is just bow your head, man. You can't look at him. But I was ignorant. See, I was ignorant. I was an ignorant man at that time. Uh, I, I didn't really know what happened inside of me. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't really know. I didn't know what happened inside of me because that's where the greatest miracles take place is inside your heart. A man's or woman's heart. Change of heart. You have a change of heart. So no one explained the word of God to me yet. And I personally had never read the Bible. So, so anyway, so, so what happened to me that day on March the 1st, 1980, that whole powerful encounter with the Lord, I put it in the closet of my mind and forgot about it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I just didn't know what was going on. So, I mean, it was powerful, but, you know, I still hadn't had it, had it explained nor had I read in the Word yet. So a month later, about a month later, you know, I was still in the solitary confinement. So I, I was released back into the main line, main line prison population, going back to the main line, GPR, general population, back to the jungle, back to the life that I knew best, back with the rest of the animals in the cage, <laughs> bunch of animals in the cage, also known as the leper colony. You know, you go, a leper colony, yeah. So, you know, back in the days, old days, leper colonies, you know, they were separated from from the society, right? So outcasts from society. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you're a new creation. All things are passed away and all things become new. All things are passed away and all things become new. Amen. That's a true statement. But I hadn't read it yet. I, I was feeling something, but I still didn't know. Right? So <clears throat> anyway, I get back to the main line, right? So I try to fit. I try to fit back, uh, you know, in with my homeboys, you know, playing dominoes, revote. Revote is handball. Handball, drinking coffee, and telling lies on a daily basis. I mean, that's all you do in there, you know. If you're on the line, you know, you play dominoes, handball, drink coffee, and tell lies all day long. But something was wrong, though. Something was wrong, see. See, something had changed. Something had changed, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't like being around my camaradas, my friends. I didn't like being around them. 
you know, for whatever the reason. I didn't understand why. I didn't like being around him. I didn't like being around him anymore. See, I, and then I was angry, and I was frustrated every day, all day. Every day, all day. My friends didn't even want me around them, man. They said, man, get out of here, Mike, you know. So I would, I would go to the gym. I'd beat that heavy bag, man, every day trying to release this tension that I had inside. But I was miserable. And, and that's all there was to that. I was miserable. So about two weeks later, two weeks later, see, I was writing a letter in the middle of the night, about midnight, when all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me. And he said like this. He said, you see how miserable you are, Mike? It's going to get worse unless you make up your mind and come to me. Let me say it again. This is what he said to me. He said, you see how miserable you are, Mike? It's going to get worse unless you make up your mind and come to me. See, God doesn't beat around the bush. That's for sure. He doesn't beat around the bush. When you, hear, when you, when you know the Lord speaking to you, when you hear the, the voice of the Lord <clears throat> and he asks you a question or something going, you know exactly what he's talking about. You don't have to like say, oh, what do you mean, God? And man, you know what he's asking. You know what he's talking about. I did. I knew exactly what he was asking me for. He was asking me to make a commitment to him. A commitment. <clears throat> but but I had fear. See, see, trap, but I had fear rise up in me. Because I understood what commitment meant. Amen. I, I, I understood what it meant. A commitment means to be dedicated to a cause. This is a Webster's Dictionary thing. To be dedicated to a cause, a pledge, an obligation that restricts freedom of action. Let me say that again. An obligation that restricts freedom of action. In other words, when you're obligated to someone or something, it stops you from doing what you feel like you're doing. You're going to do whatever is necessary, whatever is required of you. Because you're committed. A pledge. It's like when, uh, you know, you say when you join the army. You're in. You say that last pledge. Hey, you're with them now. I mean, you know, you can't just wake up one day after it's all said and done. Say, oh, well, today I don't feel like being a soldier. <laughs> don't work like that. It also means to raise your hand. To raise your hand. Levanta la mano. Raise your hand. In other words, a vow, a vow. Let me read this to you. Let me read this about a vow. A commitment is a vow. This is a New Living uh, Testament. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 4 says, When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Let, let, let me say that again. When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. It's better to just keep your mouth shut and don't say anything. You know, if you can't keep it. Now, you know, I learned that lesson when I was a kid. A real brief story. You know, I'm, in, I'm going to the youth authority the first time. I'm 15 years old, scared. You know, and I uh, heard a lot of stories about Youth Authority, California Youth Authority. You know, it's a little mini prison for teenagers. This is 1966. And so I'm going, and, and um, I remember I, I said, you know what, God? You know, and I didn't even know if there was, but I mean, if there was, I'm, I'm talking to him, right? I'm going, man, you know what, God? You know, we all do that. Those of us that are in and out of a, the criminal lifestyle and jail and prisons and like, so many, as soon as you get to jail, what's the first thing you, some of you guys do? Man, God, I promise, if you get me out of this, man, I, I won't do it again. I promise, man, I'll be a good boy, you know. So anyway, that's what I said when I was 15. I said, man, God, you know what, if you can get me out of it, if you can, if you can, if you can not get me out of it, I already knew I'm, 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 I'm on my way, right? I'm going, man, it, if you could help me just to do the time I'm supposed to and get out when I'm supposed to get out and not get no more time. And I'm asking you, if you do that, man, I'll straighten up my act. I'll be a good old boy. I'll be a good boy. I'll go back to school. Man, I'll, I'll be the best student you ever knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I meant it at the time. I thought I did. So, you know, believe it or not, 
Man, believe it or not, man, I did that whole issue in the Youth Authority without getting any more time. Should have got time, but I didn't get any. And so when I was going home, you know, I was going home. I'm, I mean, I'm leaving the, the institution. 15, I was 15, I just turned 16, or I was going to be 16. You know, I was, I, the, it was like, I, I, they give you a ride to the bus station and they just drop you off, right? So anyway, so I get there and I'm, I, there was two other guys that, were released that day and so we pulled our money together and you know had this wino go buy us a couple of bottles of wine and all that right so so I, you know just without thinking without thinking you know just normal stuff so as soon as i'm drinking that wine right the promise that i made to god i said if you do this i'll do that and i and it, man it's something struck me man i go oh man that's I was phony. I was a phony, man. Look what I'm doing already. Didn't even make it one. I didn't even make it an hour. Look what I'm doing. And you know, and I made up my mind that day. I should have never done it like that, but I made up my mind that day never to ask God for anything because I knew I wasn't going to be able to keep my promise. I knew. So why even ask? I didn't ever, never even read that scripture that I just read you. It says, better to keep your mouth shut. And, you know, and don't say nothing if you're going to say something and don't keep your vow. So, but I mean, I, I never read that, but I mean, that was just within me. I go, man, I ain't never going to do that. That's, you know, that's like playing, that's like playing games. I ain't going to play no games, you know, with God or anything like that. And so, you know, that's the way I did it. But there's so many people, you know, on Facebook community. Some of you have been in and out of jail, in and out of prisons, all that. You get arrested, you ask, you know, you come down off that that junk, man, that, you know, whatever you're on, either the carga or that, you know, the tweaker stuff or the, you know, crackhead stuff or whatever, and you get your right mind right, and you go, man, God, man, I, you know what, if you can get me out of this mess, I, I promise, you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> so, why, you know, why even say that? You know, let me put it like this. You keep on saying that, though, you know, because you know what, uh, Maybe you'll keep your promise when you get out. You, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I didn't. And so once I, um, so I'm, I'm, so I'm right there, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm a miserable guy. You know, I was a little bit afraid when he was asking me. He says, you know what? You need to come to me. Make a, you know, make a commitment. So raise, raise your hand. There was another, you know, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I knew, when it, I knew what commitment was. You know, we all knew when you're, when you're in a gang or you're in a prison gang or, when you're whatever, you raise your hand means you, you know, you're going to do that. Whatever you say, you're going to do. And then some of it's lifetime. It's a lifetime thing. It's not just part time, you know. So but anyway, so I'm, you know, I'm going wait a minute. Wait, wait. So I'm going to because I'm, I'm taking a little bit of time. Look, so. You know, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm talking to God now, right? Middle of the night. I go, wait a minute, God. Wait, 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 wait. So I was scared. I go, how can I be a Christian, man? In here. I says, I, I'm no hypocrite. I refuse to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to pick up the Bible and, and we a la parte, play the part, you know what I mean? Be a, be a you know, a, 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 what do you call that? Um, straddle the fence and all. I'm not going to do all that, man. You know, I, I, so how can I be? I can't be no Christian like that. I said, anyway, I still like, I like pornography. I like women. I like dope. I like heroin. I like selling drugs. I like money. I like the fast lane. I like the fast life. That's what I like. That's what I'm used to. That's what I grew up as. That's me. That's the way I am. And anyway, so, you know, how can I be a Christian? What you're asking me for? Good question, huh? His answer backed me up against the wall. The answer he gave me when I when I asked, said that how can I be one like that? Because I, I you know look at the way I am, look at what I like. This is what I desire. This is the way I am. He says, how can I be one? And he goes, so what? You're like that, Mike. So what? So what? You're the way you are. He says, you can't change yourself, can you? Oh, man, no, man, I can't. I know he's talking. About. I couldn't. I tried to change a couple of times when I was younger. At that time, it didn't work. Not for me. And I go, man, I can't change. Don't even want to change. He goes, you just make up your mind, be with me, and I'll change you. I'll change you. So what I'm saying, back to, he backed me up against the wall, meaning 
I had to make a decision right there. See, a conscious decision. It was a conscious decision that I had to make. Either to say, yes, I'm in with you, God, or no, I'm not ready, man. I knew I wasn't ready, but I mean, I had to make a decision. And I said, you know what? And something in me, though, something in me stirred me up. I, I knew what I should say, and I did. I opened my mouth, and I said, you know what, God? All right. From this day forward, I want to serve you to the best of my ability. I said, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I'm with you, man. I'm with you. That's the best decision I ever made in my life at that time. Best one. Made a quality decision to serve God. Conscious decision, they call it a conscious decision. It was conscious, man. I knew what I was doing. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know how the people in the, in the prison yard were gonna react. I didn't know if I was gonna get made fun out of and if they ain't gonna make fun out of me and we're gonna get a fight or do something. You know, ain't nobody gonna do that to me. And so I'm like still, I'm still like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't even know. I think I'm half saved. <laughs> I go, man, you're not gonna be like that. I've never been like that in prison. I'm no punk and all that, you know? But man, so I, I made a decision, a quality decision. I thank God for that decision, man. That was, that was 40 years ago. You know, March 1st, 19, but it wasn't, you know, March 1st, but it was a couple of weeks after that, but it was 1980. 1980, that's 40 years ago. You know, and, 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 I'll, and, I'll, and next week, I'm gonna be talking about, you know, the more of what happened to me in there because it pertains to the street. It pertains to how you serve God out here. You know how what you do, what you what you what you have to do in order to fulfill your commitment. You know, if you make a vow, then keep your vices. Don't be a fool to so say something and don't and don't do it. Don't be foolish, man. So many people are foolish, foolish. I see their lives. They. They get destroyed, you know, because they, they, everything goes go okay, and then they just forget about their commitment. They forget about God. They forget about everything. You know, they got it all. They're riding high on the hog, man. And then, boom, something like the Yorona virus comes. <laughs> and, boom, sweeps everything off your feet. Boom. Now you got to call upon the name of the Lord. Then you got to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Hey, man, you know that? Hey, this, this. This quarantine and all this stuff that's all bad and you know what? It has its good points too. It's causing a lot of the Christians to come back to where they're supposed to be at the cross. Right? The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us who are saved, it is the power of God. Oh, man. You know, that's why, that's why you know, I, I thank God today for that decision I made back then. You know, that decision that I made. It's helped me. You know, that year, that year I made a decision. I, I, uh, I, I made a vow to him too. After I raised my hand, I started serving the Lord. I'll be talking about that next week. But you know what? There's something that I did 40 years ago. I said, you know what, God? I want to make a vow. Right? I had read Ecclesiastes 5 already. I made a vow to him. I said, you know what? You know, I love you, man. I, I, I You know, I'm... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I love you. I, lo I love God. I says, and I'll do anything, and I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go anywhere you want me to go, as long as I know it's you. I'll do it. I don't care. I'm, hey, I'm committed. Even if it hurts me, I'm going to have to do it. And so, you know what? God has kept me to that vow all these years. Man, oh, I got... I got a ton of stories, you know, where I want, you know, just this happened and that happened and, you know, just, it was a ton of stories. You know, he's going to keep you to your word, though. You, you open your mouth, he's going he's gonna to remind you at the time you need to be reminded. He's going to say, remember what you said to me? And you go, man. And you, either if you're committed, if you've trained yourself to listen to the Lord, you've trained yourself to do what he's asked you to do. So you got to, you got to learn to be obedient, obedient and, and do those things and listen to God. And all. you got to be trained to do that. You got to train yourself, man. Because if you don't, then it's, you're going to be making so many mistakes, too many, too many mistakes. You don't have to be like that. 
See, you don't have to be like that. No, no. Let me tell you something, church. Because I'm talking to the church right now. And, and those that maybe you do not know the Lord. It's, it's possible you don't know the Lord. And you, you'll be listening to this and, you know, you, you have a understanding. You know, you know all about the Lord. And, you know, you might even went to school. Know about God. But you don't know him. You don't know him personally. You know, you, you ain't never made a commitment. How many of you have made a commitment to God? Just like I told you about what I did. You made a commitment. Right? And then start and you starting to follow through with it. And you've been following through. Because you have to. What do you mean, Pastor Mike? You don't have to. You don't have to. Yes, you do. You have to. You're committed. Yeah, but I don't know. You're committed. How many of you have made a commitment to God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the one that lives inside of you, man, Jesus Christ? How many of you made a commitment? That's something you need to answer. Let me, tell, let me, let me share a, a tidbit of information. Over years, I've, I've realized no commitment, no change. Some people say, man, I'm going through this and that and, I want to change, but it seems like this. And I could tell you almost once what the problem is. You ain't got no commitment. You haven't ever made a commitment. Because once you do, things will begin to change. Because no matter what comes your way, you're going to do what God tells you to do. Why? Because you're committed. Because you raised your hand. Because you made a vow. Because it means something to you. It means your life to you. To keep your word. So you're going to do it. But I feel like hitting high. So, don't. Why? I'm committed. Man, I feel like doing this. So? You're committed. Yeah, but you know what? I, well, I'm going through all kinds of changes. So? What? But I'm committed. You know, church, you got to stay committed. Stay committed to the Lord. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me close with this. Let me say a prayer. You know, follow me in this little prayer. You got to mean what you say, though. Mean what you say. You got to mean what you say. Because if you don't, you know what? It's it's just a bunch of words. Man. You got to mean what you say inside. It comes from here. Not just from here, man. It's in here. You know, you got to mean what you say. Man. You know, if you raise your hand, then raise your hand. But mean what you say. Follow me in this prayer. Say, Lord, come into my life and into my heart and change me. Forgive me for all of my sins, for everything that I've done wrong, for all the people that I've hurt in my life. And help me, God, to forgive those people, man, that have hurt me deeply. Help me to forgive them. Help me to forgive them, God. And I mean what I say with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. Take control of my life. Open up my eyes to see and my heart to receive all that you have for me. Help my unbelief, man. Help my unbelief. I'm being honest. Help my unbelief, God. You know, help me to understand what faith means and, and commitment. Lord, help me to make that decision, Lord, but that, that, that I say it and mean it. Lord, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, find, find you a good Christian brother or sister. Tell them what you did and, you know, for sure find you a good church. I mean, you know, once the coronavirus is done, hey, come visit us at Set Free. But uh, if you're from, you know, another state, another country, whatever you're listening, find you a good church, man. Somewhere where you relate to. You know, and serve God right there, man. To, to your utmost. To the best of your ability. Don't be half-stepping, man. Don't be a half-stepping, man. You just, you're, you're, you're like uh, lukewarm. Don't be half-stepping. Do it with all your heart. If you could do it, do it. Do it with all your heart. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. All your heart. Not a little piece. Todo. Do it right. If you're going to do something, do it right. <laughs> Man, I was told that many times in the way when I was young. If you're going to do something, Mike, do it right. You have stepping. So I just thank God today that I made a conscious decision to serve him in prison and it's still happening out here. 
And so with that, I'd like to say God bless you guys. And I'll see you next week.